everybody, Portland Chess Shop here to bring you the chess action, and I'm going to be explaining a little bit of the mathematical origins of chess with respect to what's called the wheat and chessboard problem. So this is a little bit of a word problem, and it has some uh, some historical legend behind it. So according to Wikipedia, which is my encyclopedia personally, the origin of chess. So stories about the invention of chess vary, however, they all incorporate the same geometric progression problem. The fable usually involves the same theme. Here's the theme. When the creator of the game of chess, who was probably an Indian mathematician named Sessa, showed his invention to the ruler of the country, the ruler was so pleased that he gave the inventor the right to name his prize for the invention. That's how cool chess is. He let him say, what do you want for it? The man, who was very wise, asked the king this. That for the first square of the chessboard, so let's call that A1, he would receive one grain of wheat, two for the second, here's the second, and so forth, doubling the mount each time. The ruler, mathematically unaware, quickly accepted the inventor's offer, even getting offended by his perceived notion that the inventor was asking for such a low price, and ordered the treasurer to count and hand over the wheat to the inventor. However, when the treasurer took more than a week to calculate the amount of wheat, the ruler asked him the reason for his tardiness. The treasurer then gave the result of the calculation and explained that it would take more than all the assets of the kingdom to give the inventor the reward. The story ends with the inventor becoming the new king. And uh, I guess there's some variations of the story in which the king punishes the inventor and just chops his head off. So either the inventor became the new king or died because of the invention of chess. But nevertheless, let's uh, look a little bit at the mathematical origins of this story. It actually explains um, some things about exponents, exponential sequences, and geometric sequences. So you're actually learning a little bit of calculus by watching this uh, chess video. Kind of unusual. So... Um, let's see. So here's the problem. If a chessboard were to have a wheat placed on each square such that one grain were placed on the first square, two on the second, four on the third, and so doubling the name of the number of grains on each subsequent square, how many grains of wheat would, would be on the chessboard at the finish? So I'm going to open up the calculator. I'm going to search calculator. Boom. I've got a calculator and I've got it already in, uh, special scientific calculator so let's see so the first one is two and then we do x to the y that means that's exponents two to the zero plus so that's just one two to the zero plus uh two to the first plus okay so now we only have three so it starts out pretty small we're gonna go, go through two of the squares and we're at three i think we're gonna count up the columns and down the columns across over this way so next we have uh, 2 to the 2, oops, shoot, 2 to the 2, all right, we're at 7. So we're getting a little bit bigger, and then 2 to the 3, getting a little bit bigger. So we've gotten 1, 2, 3, 4 of them. So we've got to square A4. Now we're going to go to square A5, 2 to the 4th plus, okay, 31 quite a bit bigger because 2 to the 4th is 16. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's probably do this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. So now we're going to go 2 to the 5th plus. All right. 63. Boom. Now 2 to the 6th plus. Boom. All right. But you see we're getting a little bit bigger each time. So now we're going to go 2 to the 7th plus 255. All right, let's see if this one uh, more than doubles. Ah, sorry, that's my email. So 2 to the 5th, or 2 to the 7th. Let's see if 2 to the 8th is actually bigger than 255. I'm kind of curious. 2 to the 8th plus. Yeah, it looks like it looks like it's actually one bigger. 2 to the 8th is 256. All right, here's the calculator. 2 to the ninth plus. All right, so, okay, all right. So th there it is, and now the next one. Um, so we're at 1,023, 1,023. I wanna see if this, if th two to the 10th is bigger than this number. Two to the 10th plus. 
Yeah. It looks like it's actually, um, you start with a one because you have two to the zero, and then it's actually like doubling. We're getting like a doubling plus one each time, aren't we? So I think the next number, I think two to the 11th might equal 2,046. Um, let me let me Google it. I don't want to destroy our calculation. Two to the eleventh is two hundred and forty eight. So this is actually going to be one bigger. Anyway, two to the eleventh plus two to the twelfth plus. So you can see that it's starting to get uh, much much larger. I think we forgot to do a few of these, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 11, 12, but we actually started with 0, so that's actually where we're at. So we haven't even covered that many squares yet, and we're already at 8,000 pieces of wheat. So I want you to take a moment to kind of guess how many pieces of wheat you think it might be, and uh, I'm pretty sure that you're going to underestimate it because the number is gargantuan. So I'm going to pull over the Wikipedia page. Let's see. Can you kind of see that? Let's see. i got to make it a little smaller. Control minus. All right. Uh, all right. So check this out. So the problem may be solved using simple addition. With 64 squares on the chessboard, the amount of grains doubles on each successive square. Then the sum of grains on all 64 squares is 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8, so forth for the first 64 squares. The total number of grains is this huge number. I don't have any idea how to say that. This is hundreds, this is thousands, this is millions, this is billions, this is trillions, which I think might be like a billion times a million would get us. I think if we had f four and a half million times four billion it might equal around that number. Actually, we might as well just uh, try that. Why not? So, uh, let's see. We're going to clear everything. 4, 5, 0, 0. That's 1,000. All right. This is a uh, million. So, I'm going to multiply this by 4 billion. One, two, so, that's 1,000. That's million. That's billion. So how many zeros is this? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And if we pull this back over, we see that this is uh, 15, isn't it? 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. So I guess it's actually billion times, 4.5 billion times 4 billion would be more accurate. So it's like 4.4 4. No, that should be a comma. Shoot. 4.4 4. All right. So that's 1000. That's million. Wait. That's okay. 1000 million billion. Okay, squared. We get that number. Which is going to have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 18 um, spaces after the first two digits, which is the same as in our special Wikipedia article. Anyway, so uh, this is actually explaining the geometric sequences and exponential sequences. Here's how you can express it uh, geometrically. It's uh, 2 to the 0 plus 2 to the 1st plus 2 to the 2nd plus 2 to the 3rd um, and so forth up to 2 to the 63rd. So this actually has something to do with calculus. You actually learn about this kind of thing in school. So the simple brute force solution is to just manually double and add each step of the series, which is what we were doing with the chessboard. So, um, and uh, in calculus, you know, I guess I'm starting to teach a little bit of math. I, I don't know. I like math. Hopefully chess players like math. There's actually a lot of correlation between strong math skills and chess playing skills. Um, so this is a cool notation. This is the capital sigma notation that you learn about if you become a uh, math super prodigy. And uh, I to the zero, that means you're starting with an increment at zero. So you get two 
to the zero, and then you add, right? So there's plus, and then this increments up to two to the first, plus two to the first, increments up to two to the second, plus two to the second. So you get this digit, right? So you get two to zero, two to the first, two to the second, two to the third, two to the fourth, all the way up until 63, and then you stop at 63. So that's how you read the capital sigma notation. And look at this. This is what I was explaining, what I was trying to hint at a little bit earlier. It can be solved much more easily using this. 2 to the 64th minus 1, which is uh, kind of wild. So to all of this, all of this, right, the sum of all of these uh, parts, right, these 63 different, different exponential parts um, are going to equal... 2 to the 64th minus 1. So 2 to the 60, that's just like how, how you know, this doubling process works is where every time you double a new one, you're, you're, you contain all of the previous uh, doublings in some sense. So here's a proof, actually. So a proof is that S uh, equals 2 to the 0 plus 2 to the 1st, 2 to the 2nd, all the way up to 63. Multiply each side by 2. Sure, I know how to do that. Multiply by 2, we get 2 to the 2s, and then this is uh, 2 to the 1st, because it's just 2 times 2 to the 0, to the zero which makes it 2 to the 1st, because, uh, you know, 1 times 2 is 2, etc. Here, 2 times 2 is 4, and 4 equals 2 to the 2nd. So this makes sense to me. So we get this step, and then we subtract the original series from each side. So we subtract uh, s from this side, and we subtract this whole uh, 63 part um, sum from the other side, and we get 2s minus s, which is just going to be s, and then we get 2 to the 64th is left over because we subtracted everything that was inside of this, right? And 2 to the 64th was not a part of this. So this part is still doesn't cancel out. But for example, the 2 to the 63 does cancel out, as you can see, and 2 to the 1st does cancel out with 2 to the 1st, 2 to the 2nd does cancel out with 2 to the 2nd, etc. So everything from here to here cancels out with everything from here to here, but then you still have this 2 to the 0 that doesn't cancel out, and that's a negative 2 to the 0 because we subtracted the original series. That's why we have a minus s. So we get uh, this, that it's 2 to the 64th minus 1. So I hope you learned something about either chess or mathematics. So thanks a lot for watching. Appreciate it. Thumbs up if you can. It helps me out a lot. Have a good one. Portland Chess Shop. Until next time.